In lesson 8.3, we are going to talk about different malfunctions that the endocrine gland can have. Um, basically, if it's not releasing enough hormones or it's releasing too much of a hormone. One of the first things we're going to talk about is your pituitary disorder. So um, we, we're going to talk about hypersecretion and hyposecretion. When we talk about hypersecretion, that means there is an excessive amount of a specific hormone being um, secreted by a specific gland. In this case, it's your pituitary gland. When we talk about hyposecretion, it's when not enough is being secreted. So one of the things that can be caused by hypersecretion of your pituitary gland is called acromegaly. Basically, this is when you have a hypersecretion of the growth hormone, um, and this is called gigantism. Basically, this is when you have either different extremities um, of your body have an um, abnormal size, or your entire body can exhibit this as well. Um, and what happens is you have this non-cancerous tumor that grows right next to the pituitary gland that presses on it and um, can uh, cause things like headaches, uh, vision problems, seizures, um, just an overwhelming exhaustion. Um, and this can be seen in adults and children. Adults are going to have very thick bones. They're going to have a, um, very much enlarged facial features. Um, their hands are going to be large or could be large or their feet. Um, and this is going to be a gradual process over time. In children, though, um, they are going to be um, unusually tall for their age group. Um, and they could also show large hands or large feet as well. Um, the treatment options are, one, you can either shrink the tumor so that the uh, levels of the growth hormone um, can start to decrease, or you can remove the tumor. Um, sometimes the tumor can be hard to get to, so they can use more precise treatments like radiation beam or gamma knife. Um, and the problem is that they're not going to cause the effects such as like large hands or feet to be reversed, um, but um, they can pretty much stop it from progressing. Um, and unfortunately, this can lead to shortness of life. Um, hyposecretion of the pituitary gland is when you don't have enough of a specific hormone being released from this, uh, specifically the anterior pituitary. And this would lead to something called dwarfism. So this is when you have not enough of the growth hormone being released from the pituitary. Um, this is usually categorized in adults who are less than four feet tall. Um, and this is only going to affect their physically height, their size. Um, this doesn't mean that intellectually it's a being, it affects them at any means at all. Um, people can exhibit this, you know, while in utero, which means you're while still in the womb. Um, and um, this can also be caused by a brain injury or some kind of medical condition, um, like if you're not having enough of the growth hormone um, in general. Uh, treatment is one, to early um, diagnose it and then also to supplement the growth hormones that you are lacking. All right, so let's talk about diabetes insipidus. So diabetes insipidus is when you have hyposecretion of the antidiuretic hormone, hormone. So this is when you don't have enough of this antidiuretic hormone being secreted from the posterior pituitary gland. Um, this will cause um, a lot of the um, water to be lost, um, as well as the electrolytes that your body has and needs. Um, and this is going to target mainly your, so normally ADH, your antidiuretic hormone, is going to target your kidneys. It will help the kidneys to reabsorb the water from the urine. But when you have this deficiency in the ADH, um, you're going to have a lot of loss of H2O or water um, and a lot of loss of electrolytes. So people with diabetes insipidus, they have something called polydysphesia, which basically means they have just really excessive thirst. They feel like they can't get enough water. They're constantly drinking water because they constantly feel thirsty. Um, and this is going to be different from diabetes mellitus, which is when we talk about insulin and glucose levels. All right, so let's get into thyroid disorders. One of the main ones is hyperthyroidism. Basically, this is when you have... Um, just an overactive thyroid. So you can actually see this in a lot of people who have this issue. They have something called what looks like their neck is swollen. Um, specifically, this is called a goiter. Basically, um, what happens is your body does not make iodine. 
Iodine is an uh, important component that you get from eating, um, basically from your diet. If you notice sometimes, sometimes if you go to buy salt, there are salts that have iodine in it, they're iodized salt. Um, and so you get it from your diet and it's really important for your thyroids. And you really need only a fraction of it in order to benefit your body. Um, and so when you have insufficient amount of iodine, you can uh, cause something called um, goiter, which is basically your thyroid is hyperfunctioning. Um, and that's what causes these disorders. So um, when you have this um, thyroid disorders, basically your thyroid glands have issues secreting um, T4 and T3 hormones that control your uh, metabolism. And so what happens is um, when you have low levels of your T3 or T4 hormones, they can't um, participate in negative feedback because there's not enough being, of them being made. So they can't go back to the start of you know, where this chain reaction is coming, which is from your pituitary gland and your hypothalamus. And they can't tell them to stop secreting the thyroid, releasing and stimulating hormone. Um, so negative feedback would not work in this sense. And so the side effects of this would be increased heart rate, elevated body temperature, hyperactivity, weight loss, um, and you know diarrhea, difficult concentrating, um, and you can and therefore have also enlarged um, thyroid glands in general. Other causes to have this is just um, you could have a non-cancerous growth, and just your thyroids just can be inflamed in general. Best treatments for this is to either remove your thyroids or to remove the tumor that's causing um, the th thyroid disorder. Um, and you can also have radioactive iodine put in um, to your body to uh, destroy the thyroid cells that are causing the issue. And then there's also drugs that you can take, medications that you can take to reduce the thyroid hormones. One of the diseases that um, is caused by an overactive thyroid gland is called Graves' disease. Basically, it's an autoimmune disorder where your body is attacking itself. Um, there is a tumor that causes just a lot of um, thyroid hormones to be secreted in your body, um, and it causes something called exothalamus, which basically is the bulging of your eye. So you can see that in the picture. Um, it causes um, just difficulty with closing your eye. It can have um, difficulty in vision, and um, you can't. Sometimes people, it's so. Sometimes people's eyes are bulging so much they can't even close it, and it gets super dry, and your cornea gets all scarred and things like that. And so, it's it can be very um, just inconvenient and very um, um, hard to deal with in general. Okay, so now let's talk about hypothyroidism. So this is when your thyroid is underactive. Um, and this is caused by something called um, thyroiditis. Basically, this is when your um, thyroid cells um, get damaged because some kind of inflammation is occurring. Um, and so this could be because you have uh, a goiter that you're experiencing that causes the thyroid cells to be inflamed. Um, so what could cause this? You can have your own immune system attack your thyroid um, gland. You could get it from a cold or a respiratory infection. Sometimes pregnant women develop this after giving birth. Um, and sometimes you can um, also get it from um, prescription drugs as well. Um, usually the people that will see these issues are women and also people over the age of 50. Um, some of the symptoms that come along with this is just an overwhelming feel of exhaustion. Uh, you can have skin issues, like you start to see, notice that you're more pale or um, dry, you're going to have dry skin. Your hair can start to thin out and fall out. Um, your nails are starting to just get um, easily broken. You have increased sensitivity um, just in your surroundings. You can have constipation, weight gain. Um, and the treatment for this is simply to just really replace your thyroid hormones with um, another hormone that can just balance it out in your body. Um, myxedema is basically when you don't treat or um, diagnose your hypothyroidism in adults. 
So adults that have thyroidism but haven't gotten it checked out or whatever um, can have weight gain. They can notice changes in their face like it looks like it's puffy or swollen. Um, your body temperature might be lower than normal. Your skin can start to feel dry. And then also you're not mentally um, able to, you know, um, you're, you feel like you can't mentally focus on things that you used to or um, have uh, as high of a mental activity as you used to. Um, and you can um, treat this with um, thyroxine, which is one of the hormones, um, and you can take this usually orally. Now, children can also have hypothyroidism. This is called neonatal hypothyroidism. And this is when um, they can either have it after they're born or even in the womb. Um, and basically, this is because their thyroid glands are not well developed or the hormones that they're releasing is um, just not working correctly. Um, and this can lead to mental and physical disability, skin issues, same thing like brittle hair. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure that this gets diagnosed early on so that you can help to reverse or even stop the uh, disorder from progressive, progressing anymore. Um, and they can also be treated with thyroxine to um, help with the um, hypothyroidism. So let's go into disorders of the parathyroid hormone. One of them is called hypercalcemia. Basically, when your um, parathyroid hormone, so basically, um, uh, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin, um, which calcitonin is just from your thyroid, together they help to regulate your blood calcium levels. So when you have hyperglycemia, this is when you have hypersecretion of the parathyroid hormone which means there's too much calcium in the blood. So when you have hypersecretion of the parathyroid hormone, um, you can have just um, your kidneys are just taking in a lot more calcium, which causes kidney stones to develop. Your bones can start to get holes in them and just become super weak and easily breakable. And it can also affect your nervous and cardiovascular system. Um, and, you know, that can cause depression, um, decrease heart rate, and just fatigue. Hypocalcemia, this is when you have low calcium in your blood. And so um, this can affect both your nerves and your muscles because you have continuous electrical stimulation occurring, um, which can lead to tetany, which is basically you have longer periods of a muscle contraction. You can't relax. Um, and if you leave this untreated, your muscles can literally die because of lack of oxygen. Um, and treatments of this uh, is just parathyroid replacement um, therapy. Um, you can get or vitamin D and calcium orally um, through medication, and then just to also monitor your calcium levels so that you can um, track the progression of this disorder. Um, adrenal medulla disorders. So one of them, um, this is a very hard word to pronounce, it's called pheochromocytoma. Um, I will not say that again. <laughs> but basically, this is when you have a tumor on your adrenal medulla. Um, and this is going to cause your adrenal medulla to hypersecrete hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and high amounts of these hormones can cause um, problems like high blood pressure, rapid heart rate, weight loss, nervousness, sleep uh, disturbances, things that can honestly be life-threatening. Um, and some of these symptoms can are not going to occur, like these symptoms are not usually going to occur like continuously, but they can happen from time to time. And usually you can, um, you know, if you treat it correctly, you can get it over with um, between 15 to 20 minutes of dealing with it. So ways to diagnose this is you can do a CT scan, MRI, you can do blood tests and urine tests, you can get a biopsy done. Um, and then you can also get treatment by lowering your blood pressure through medications, whether um, getting, you know, orally me prescribed medication or um, medications where you have to go in and get an IV for it. And if it's caused by a tumor, you can remove it. Okay, let's get into talking about adrenal cortex disorders. So what are they caused by? They are caused by um, tumor growth. Um, hormones are not getting secreted properly. 
um, you can have either too much or too little um, of the hormones from the cortex being secreted. One of the things um, that you can disorders you can have is called Cushing syndrome. Basically, this is when you have too much of cortisol um, from the adrenal um, cortex being distributed to your body. Um, hyper secretion of cortisol is due to one over secretion of ACTH, which is your adrenocorticotropin by your pituitary gland, which is causes the hyper secretion of the cortisol by the adrenal cortex. You can have a, a tumor on the adrenal gland that causes hyper secretion of cortisol. Um, or you can be using steroid drugs for a long time, um, which will suppress the release of ACTH, which can cause this as well. Um, so some of the symptoms are here um, said rounded moon-shaped faces. You can have a lot of weight gain, especially to the upper part of your body, a lot of glucose levels in your blood, high blood pressure, which is hypertension, issues with bone like osteoporosis. You can have different colored stretch marks. Um, and then just um, not mentally capable of handling things that you were once before. And then women will actually notice that they have an increased amount of facial hair. So how can we diagnose this? You can um, track your cortisol levels by your spit or your saliva. Um, and you can also monitor, um, you know, how much cortisol levels are there through a urine collection sample. Um, treatment is if, um, if you have a tumor, you can also get that removed. If it's because of a steroid drug, you can um, slowly t be taken off of it and then um, allow your pituitary to start producing ACTH again. Okay, so one of the diseases is called Addison's disease, which is basically caused by um, not enough of the adrenal corticoid hormones being released. So this is when you don't, when you have muscle atrophy, uh, you can have bronze skin tone, low blood pressure, kidney damage, um, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, severe loss of fluids and electrolytes, and just general weakness. Side effects that you can see with this um, is low blood volume. You can have um, changes in the amount of electrolyte in your blood, and then this can also lead to shock. And usually the best treatment that they're going to recommend is just hormone replacement therapy. Okay, so let's talk about the pancreas. So the pancreas, we are going to talk about glucose levels, which means we're going to talk about diabetes, mellitus, also abbreviated as DM. So when your body is not able to produce um, enough insulin so that it can um, take in the blood to lower um, blood glucose levels, you can, or increase blood glu uh, glucose levels, um, you can have either two types of diabetes. You can have type 1 or type 2. Type 1 is called juvenile onset diabetes. About 5 to 10 percent of people in U.S. have this. Um, and then about um, uh, type 2 is um, adult onset diabetes. Um, the National Institute of Health um, they actually said that 27% of adults 65 years and older were diabetic in 2010, which is actually a lot if you think about it. And then um, it's the seventh leading cause of death, COD, in the U.S. And people who have type 1 or type 2 can actually have kidney failure. They can, might have to get um, amputation of limbs which I've seen, and then um, it can even now cause blindness. I actually have a friend um, who was in clinicals and looking at patients' eyes, and um, she was able to figure out that certain people had diabetes and had no idea just based on how their eyes look. Um, and so, um, and this can also lead to heart disease and stroke. So how do we diagnose it? One, there are different tests you can take. First of all, there's a fasting test which checks your blood glucose level once for when you haven't eaten anything over a long period of time. There's a glucose intolerance test where basically um, they give you a sugary drink and then you wait a little bit and then you um, get your blood tested to see how well your body is able to intake or handle um, or process, I should say, sugar in your body. Um, and then there's also HbA1c test. Um, which is when a longer period of time 
that you measure your blood glucose levels. And then they also have a criteria of where you fall, um, depending on how much glucose you have, that will tell you, are you within the normal range? Are you, could you be pre-diabetic or could you be diabetic? So what are some symptoms? Usually, um, one of the things is if you have, you know, a history of diabetes in your family, you want to make sure you're getting tested regularly through blood tests or whatever to make sure that you are not, you don't have it. Um, just because, you know, um, your family has it, um, history of it doesn't mean you're absolutely going to get it. Um, but you do have to be careful. Um, so some of the symptoms is you could have polyuria, which is basically you're just urinating a lot. Um, you, that's usually your body's way of getting rid of the extra glucose. You could have polydipsia, uh, which basically is you're very thirsty a lot and you feel like you have to constantly drink water um, because you have a lot of water loss due to urinating it out. Um, and then you can also have um, polyphagia, which is basically you're really hungry because your body is using up fats and proteins as fuel sources for um, just regular body mechanisms. Other symptoms you might have is like um, random weight loss or weight gain. Um, you might notice changes in your vision. You might be more nauseous than normal. Um, and then you might have like a cup or you maybe you like hit your leg and have an open wound and you notice that it's taking longer to heal than normal. Um, you might want to get that checked out. So type 1 DM is basically an auto autoimmune disorder where your body is attacking itself. Your immune system is attacking um, its own beta insulin secreting cells. Um, and so it's either going to decrease the amount of insulin production or just stop it completely. Um, so your blood glucose levels are going to start to rise in your blood because there's no way of um, taking it out of your blood into storage by your insulin. And so usually people who have this have to get insulin injections. Um, they have to monitor their insulin levels to make sure it's at the right level. And if it's not, they have to take an insulin dose. Um, and they can either have insulin um, like injections, like I said, or sometimes people will have an insulin pump that's attached to them. So it's constantly monitoring your blood glucose levels, and then it will pump automatically insulin into your body when it senses a change. Um, and like I said, it, this can be hereditary. Um, and, you know, if you diagnose it at a young age, um, you have, you know, um, you can, you need to seek immediate uh, attention for it. So that you can fix it. All right, type 2 DM, this is when your pancreas secretes insulin, but the insulin receptors in your body are not receptive to it. So this causes insulin resistance. And so usually this happens because either you're um, someone's dealing with obesity, they're not being physically active. Um, usually they might have a history of diabetes in their family or just because of age. Um, again, National Institute of Health says that 80% of type 2 diabetics are overweight or obese. So this can be, you know, um, mo mainly prevented by just taking care of your body. Um, so glucose, basically in this case, glucose is not being able to be taken in by your cells because there is, um, the insulin is not working properly. Um, and so blood glucose levels are starting to rise and so that individual becomes hyper, like, glycemic, which is, means that you have a lot of glucose in your blood. Um, so the glucose is then going to be taken in by your kidneys and then um, urinated out. And so that's why people who have diabetes, one of the symptoms is just a lot of urination. Um, your body is not able to use the amount, the excess amount of glucose in your blood um, because there's no insulin to actually take it up. So your body will use fats and proteins instead, therefore you could get more hungry. You can sometimes, um, uh, you know, your body will go into ketoacidosis, which basically means, um, could go into ketoacidosis, which basically means you can go into a diabetic coma or and even cause death. Um, and your blood basically becomes more acidic because of the ketone bodies that's it's producing. People can, um, you know, one of the symptoms is people can have ketosis, which basically means their breath smells sweeter because of the amount of acetone in it. Um, so treatments is healthy diet, getting exercise, um, taking um, things that will help your hypoglycemic um, to help with your blood glucose levels um, or 
oral hypoglycemic agents, and then also to have an insulin. So there is no actual cure for diabetes mellitus. Um, one, it's important that you would just educate yourself on how to take care of your body to prevent things like this. Um, and then also to know that um, there's something called peripheral neur neuropathy, which basically means um, your peripheral nerves, um, you know, can start to basically degenerate um, and have muscle, you can have muscle weakness um, and atrophy of your muscles and pain and numbness, which um, can be very, very difficult to live with and very inconvenient as well. And that's it for 8.3.